Okay, let's now take a look at the mod matrix tab. Here you can make modulation assignments for most controls in Serum. Now you already know that modulation assignments can be made in the oscillator tab as well. Like I can drag this LFO1 crosshair and drop it on the filter cutoff. I'll turn on the filter so we can hear the modulation. The modulation is bipolar right now, but you can option shift click on the arc to change it to unipolar. Now if we go to the matrix tab, we will see the assignment that we just made. LFO1, modulating the filter cutoff. This type over here is a change from bipolar to unipolar. When the modulation is running, you can see that blue streak showing the instantaneous position of the modulator. I like this curve control. We're using the default triangle shape LFO, but with this curve, we can quickly change the shape. You can hear how the modulation is leaning towards the higher value. Negative curve values will do the opposite. That blue streak also helps visualize this change. This is the modulation amount slider. That little graph next to the slider shows the total output of the modulator. At zero, you see no activity on the graph. And as I push up the amount, you see the activity on the graph. Okay, so you know the source and destination drop-down options, but you can add an additional aux source that will influence the modulation. You have a list of modulation sources here. Let's try the chaos modulator. It has its own curve amount as well. To control the chaos modulator, we can go to the global tab. And here are the two chaos generators. Now these are very similar to noise sources. If I set the rate really high, you will notice the distortion and modulation. This chaos rate can also be BPM synced. Though since it's chaotic, you won't really get a very rhythmic result from this. Let's try the curve option for this aux source. Works just like the source curve option. Finally, here you have the modulation output control. At zero, there's no modulation. And at 100, you get full modulation. Okay, I'll switch this to something less chaotic. Maybe another LFO. I'll choose LFO2 as LFO1 is already being used. Let's change the rate of LFO2. So that's a pretty interesting shape. Now let's talk about this mod option. Currently, it's on the default mode. So the aux source is multiplied to the existing source before being applied on the destination. But you can inverse this, so it works the other way around. I'm not sure if you can hear the difference there, but we'll get back to this in a second. This option just bypasses the entire modulator. Okay, going back to these two modes. I'll change the aux source to mod wheel. It will be easier to understand now. Okay, so when the mod wheel is down, you have no modulation. But as the mod wheel amount is increased, you start to hear the modulation. So that's the normal mode. In inverse mode, when the mod wheel is at its highest, there's no modulation. But as this is reduced, you start to hear modulation. Cool, so that should make sense now. Okay, now there are some modulators that are only accessible from this matrix tab. Here you can see that even the noise oscillator can be used as a source. Let's make it modulate the semitone pitch of oscillator A. Let's bypass this LFO modulation. Push up the amount here. The noise oscillator must be on for this to work. If you don't want to hear it, you can just bring down the level and it will still work as a modulator. Bring down the pitch. Now you can hear the individual steps. Pretty cool how this works.
You also have aftertouch as a source here. There are two note on random value generators. Let's try this. So every time I play a note, a new value is generated and we get that random pitch modulation type effect. Except it only happens on each note on. If it's bypassed, you can hear that the note does not change. So there are two of these if you need to use them. Then there's also a pitch bend. The last one is a bit unusual. It generates a fixed value. So in a sense, it's not modulating the destination at all, just fixing it at a specific value. It's almost like not having any modulation on. But I guess this could be helpful in some more complex patches. Anyway, so that's the mod matrix tab. I would suggest making use of this tab when you have a lot of modulation assignments. It can be a bit hard to see modulation assignments in the oscillator tab, but the matrix tab lays everything out in an organized fashion. So it will definitely help to use this tab in more complex patches. All right, next we'll take a look at the global tab. 